But one of the things I would impart, you know, to to you is that when you um, stay connected and you truly build a community with your subscribers, if there are supply chain issues and you stay in constant communication, this is what's happening. We're waiting on one last item, but it's an amazing item. We don't want your box to go out without it. You know, things like that. It helps to mitigate that friction that you may receive, as long as, of course, you don't make it a recurring thing. everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And today we've got an amazing guest. I met her and her mother who are still an amazing team till this day, which I love because you guys know me and my mother are our business partners as well. Um, but I met her many years back at a women business conference in Atlanta, um, talking about e-commerce, um, Amazon, things like that. But she has since shifted into something so amazing. She is the founder and CEO of Her Dash Mine. I want to make sure you guys get that so that you can go visit uh, the website, hermine.com, a women owned self-care subscription box company with an amazing story. Her name is Trudy. I can't wait to be able to speak with her and we are going to get to this interview in just a moment. The first thing I wanted to tell you guys though is don't forget about the workshop. Yes, live and in-person workshops in none other than Atlanta, Georgia. In January, uh, we're going to the America's Mart trade show. We're going to do walkthroughs. We're going to have meet and greets. It's going to be amazing. I have been telling you guys about this. We're more than 50 percent full at this point and you want to register early because you've got to register with America's Mart and they ask for credentials and all these things so I want you to be able to be prepared for that because um, it takes a couple of weeks to get registered and make sure that they have all your paperwork and all that kind of stuff so I cannot wait to do bundles with you guys live and in person it's going to be awesome mommyincome.com slash workshop um, use the work the coupon code workshop 50 to save uh, $50 off of your registration um, and I I'd love to be able to see you there. So now let's get to today's interview because I just love Trudy and Pam and their story and the story surrounding the subscription box and what they've done both on and off Amazon to grow this company. Um, you're just going to hear it straight from her. She tells the best stories and has got amazing stories. So um, welcome Trudy to the show. So great to be here. So thank you so much for inviting me. For sure. So let's talk first a little bit of background. I know we met uh, initially over probably, you know, one of these like live feeds back in the, back in the day, live streams, and then in person at the women's uh, bu business conference, some one of many that we had gone to um, several years back, you and your mom both. So tell me a just a little bit about um, how you got started even in becoming an entrepreneur. Oh, wow. So, so that's an interesting story. It's been, I think, uh, kind of throughout, I can, as long as I can remember, I think back when I was in my teens, I first started with um, homemade cheesecakes. I'm like, oh, you know, I made one. And I go, this is good. And people were interested and like, oh, well, people may buy them. And so that was kind of the, the initial, you know, dabble in, in business, even when I was younger. Um, but that was because my mom had set that example, right? She was doing real estate. When we first came to this country, we were originally from uh, Jamaica. And when we first came to this country, my mom was looking for different opportunities. And she got her um, real estate license and she got her broker's license. And, you know, so she was always looking for opportunities um, to, to be her own boss. And so that was something I saw early on. And so even, you know, for me, I got my real estate license eventually and, you know, did did some different things. Um, so it's it's been it's been a part of me for a long time. Um, and as far as, you know, the the Amazon side of the business, um, we started that after my mom left corporate America. She said, oh, you know, there's there are actually people behind the Amazon beast. Um, and I had no, I, I, it was kind of like gone over my head when, you know, you see the little post about, you know, you can buy it from this person or these, this company. I'm like, I didn't even notice that. Um, so she introduced this concept. And so we, you know, kind of got into e-commerce that way. And so we've been in the e-commerce space now for, I think about six years. And, um, and then we, my, my aunt who are, Box is yeah, because that that kind of leads right to you were in e-commerce and then, um, you know, were you guys doing um, your own private label products or were you doing arbitrage or wholesale? Like what was your business model on on e-commerce before you kind of made the switch into what we're getting into today? 
So, yeah, initially we started with, um, I think most people do with books, right? So we started doing books and finding things um, at garage sales and things like that. Then we went into retail arbitrage, um, you know, going to different stores and uh, uh, online arbitrage, wholesale, privately. We kind of made that, you know, transition. Mm -hmm. And bundles, you know, which is where we really um, work more with you is, you know, learning how to bundle um, and, you know, so even with, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about, it's kind of a, the next level of bundling. Um, so, I, I, you know, I give you lots of credit for introducing us to that concept and kind of honing those skills. I am by no means an expert in that, but definitely followed your guidance on how to conceptualize putting different products from different places into one product. Well, I think you guys took that concept and just made it into something amazing. So, um, of course, your journey involves, you know, the different, you know, what I call like climbing up the, the Amazon e-commerce ladder, of, you know, books and retail arbitrage and wholesale and you've got bundling and private label. And now you have this, this, your ultimate private label, right? But this, this subscription box. And I know that although this can be, this is a newer, trendier thing that people are getting into, but yours is so fantastic and special because of the story that's behind it. Because honestly, anybody can buy products, right? But we want to buy inspiration. We want to buy um, something that we know is supporting something that's important. So um, talk to me about your, to tell the audience, because I know a little bit about it, but I want you to just share the story of how um, your Her Mind box came to, came to life. Okay. Uh, so her mind is actually named after my favorite aunt um, and, um, you know, my mom's baby sister, her mind. She passed away in 2019. She was an amazing human being. Uh, she was an architect by trade. Uh, she became an artist later in life, a sculptor. Um, and one of the things that she did, which is her legacy, is that she had, she fought for a law to be passed so you could plant fruits and vegetables on your own property. She, the city she lived in, um, started fining her and her husband for planting fruits and vegetables in their front yard. They decided to fight back. Um, the Institute for Justice took up the case. They initially lost the um, case here in, our, in Miami. It went to the state um, Supreme Court and they won and a law was passed um, because of her. So, you know, she she was a trailblazer. She was the ultimate feminist, if you will. She was a, an ardent supporter of women and women's causes. And, um, you know, she, had, she was uh, ill for a long time. And so we had this journey with her as she, you know, kind of made that transition. And she was always a supporter of us in business. Um, and so we looked, we, we, my mom and I talked about it. How can we keep her memory alive? She did so much for so many people. And she was, you know, she was my doula when I was pregnant. I mean, she was, you know, just so many things to us. How can we keep her memory alive? And how can we, um, how can we package this feeling that she has for us and how she, how she loved us? She loved us more than we loved ourselves, I tell people. Um, and so how can we give this gift of this feeling and this care and this um, you know, love to other people and other women while also supporting women. And so, you know, when when I when I was working through this launch of this box, um, the idea of having it, you know, primarily curated from women-owned businesses was a, a almost a last minute decision. And I went live with that and then kind of thought to myself, what if I can't, <laughs> you know, what happens if after, you know, we put this out, it, it, we can't. And I would say, you know, that it has not been an issue to work with women-owned businesses to curate the products for this box. And um, it is our central mission to support women in as many ways as we can. Not only our support, our subscribers, our sisterhood of subscribers is what we call them, um, but also the vendor partners that are in the box. And now we've gone with, we, as of our anniversary in July, we had worked with over 60 women owned businesses um, to curate products for the box. And I'm very proud of that. Um, and so that's kind of the story behind 
behind the box. You know, it's so funny because although we've talked before and I've read this and prep for this um, interview and we talked before about it, I still got goosebumps when you're telling the story. It's like we all, I could feel her mind's love, like as you were describing her and as you were describing her and her legacy. And it's like, we all need a her mind in our life, right? It's like, we all need that person that loves us more than ourselves, that we can love ourselves and, and to someone that just no matter what is is fighting for us is with us as an advocate not just for herself but for all women everywhere and you carrying the torch for this um does indeed like you have already distributed her legacy and are continuing to because now it's a part of me now it's a part of every woman that you have touched with these boxes and are continuing to support that and that is just such a beautiful thing about um you starting something that's got so much passion and love behind it is that as you were saying Saying, you know, of course, it's scary. Can I do this? Can I do this with just women owned? Is it going to be affordable? Is it going? Can I find enough product? Can I, you know, continue? Because with subscription boxes, right? You know, you're, you're coming up with new things every month because people are receiving new boxes and you know all that kind of stuff. And so, um, I'm sure that that's kind of part of of the challenge of coming up with with some of the products and suppliers. Um, so, are you using mostly like? Um, so, when it came to the box, uh, explain to us what the box really what's inside of the box what is the benefit of the box because I know you guys do things um differently than other subscription boxes out there which also makes it very special just with her legacy alone it's amazing but then you guys do even more amazing things so tell us a little bit about like what to expect when we get a her mind box so each so we we have themes for each month right and so um we curate to that theme and the themes are around self-love and um, self-love and self-care. And so, for example, um, this month is thankful, right? For November is thankful. And so it's an opportunity to be thankful for, you know, what the things that we have in our lives and um, for each other. And so we're thankful for our subscribers and our, our sisterhood the vendors and all of that. And so we want to, to put that feeling in the box. And so that was uh, for this month. Last month was Fearless Warrior. And so we, you know, look for things like the lipstick I'm wearing is from one of our vendors and because it was this fierce red, you know, uh, you know, almost like face paint, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we curate around the themes to, to remind women to care for themselves, to love themselves and to celebrate each other. Um, and so that's, that's kind of each month is that's the theme or that's how our themes are, are um, based. You know, and, and one of the things about that, like, that's first of all, I love the lipstick. I'm like, where am I going to get that lipstick? I just like, it's so pretty, um, and, you know, in, including all of these in there. And I know like this, the self-care, I want to call it a buzzword, right? Because although we, we, it is a buzzword right now, but it's not going away. And there's a reason why there, there's so much involved with self-care right now is because as women, we tend to put ourselves last all the time. Are we not? Are we always, there's always one more thing, always one more thing to do for this person, that person, what I, you know, all the to do's. And then we fall into bed exhausted without ever really caring for our soul, for our mind, for our body, for our own uh, health. And so that's what I love about, you know, this, this self-care box. It's not just, I mean, just the, just lighting a candle to walk into a room, to smell something fresh and new is, is such a delight to wear a new shade of lipstick. I mean, you know, these things seem small, but they can really boost our, our spirits. They can really boost our mental health to be like, okay, I'm worth this. I've got this. I can feel my best and do my best and take care of myself. And it's not, it's not a, for me, at least it's not a thing. I always think of first. It's usually last, like, Oh, I'll get to that, you know? And it's just like, gosh, if I just, just take care of myself on a regular basis. Now let's talk a little bit about the challenges that you've gone through to, for, you know, cause this is a pretty, this is pretty new for you. You just hear, hit your one year anniversary in July. So congratulations on that. Um, so, you, you know, you're past kind of the launch phase and you've gotten into like, okay, now we're doing like regular operations. So what are some of the challenges that you've had to overcome so far in this past year with just uh, getting, getting your box out there, get it, was it logistics? Like what are some of the challenges? 
So I would say uh, one of the challenges that come to mind is, you know, working with small businesses like um, is, is can be challenging from time to time, especially solopreneurs. And so we've had cases where, um, you know, a business owner was unable to deliver a con deliver product. We have one that completely disappeared after we placed an order, paid for it, et cetera. She completely, we don't know what happened to her. Mm -hmm. I would hope that she's well. Um, so, you know, there is an inherent risk sometimes with working with smaller businesses, um, but we are committed to doing that. And so, you know, working through, um, you know, sometimes as well, when we're interested in a product, a vendor, uh, especially a smaller vendor might be a little apprehensive, you know, whether or not they will be able to deliver. and um, and so it, it's sometimes the opportunity to talk with them and explain to them that, you know, let, we can, we can, you know, we're flexible. There are things that we can do. If you let us know that, you know, you're a little apprehensive as we talk about being fearless and going through that fear, sometimes it, it's, it's inherent in us to try and help people, um, you know, make that, take that step, especially knowing that we've gone through that, that process ourselves. Um, and encourage you know small businesses to kind of take take a chance take take a take a leap sometimes yes. take a leap of faith to step forward to just you know see what happens yeah because there's always some challenges you know with supply and 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 demand and of course this past year or so with pandemic and supply chain issues um I'm you know just no stranger to you know product being ordered and then never arriving or not arriving for you know maybe a year later oh, it's funny <laughs> we just we placed an online order back in April and of course it was like a a to be determined, all these different things. And all of a sudden it literally arrives last week with no email, no anything, just arrives it. I'm like, oh, here's the stuff we ordered six and a half months ago. Like, great. Um, so, you know, the, the challenges in business there. So how are you liking this? Like, what are the differences that you face initially when you're just doing some e-commerce and there, there wasn't this passion and mission behind it um, that is kind of the driver now? Like, what, what are some of the, the differences that you've had to transition into to uh, for regular e-commerce into your whole brand new website with marketing and all this different stuff. Um, what is what is what are some of the transitions that you had to make from just regular e-commerce? So I think that you know one of the things, especially with the subscription box model, is this: you, you're on a calendar, you're on a schedule, and you have people who have um, committed their you know their money already. And so you have to perform and you have to perform within this particular window. And so, you know, having schedules and having, you know, a process where you can basically repeat the same activity at the same level, if not exceeding that level on a recurring basis is, you know, a, a little different or a lot different than just regular e-commerce. Um, as far as what we've had to do, you know, we've had to um, get better at digital marketing, uh, social media, um, uh, email marketing, um, getting, you know, messages out, staying connected to our uh, subscribers, you know, working with our vendors, because we get uh, a lot of uh, inquiries where people want to be in the box companies, you know, reach out to us, you know, how do we keep that process a smooth one, and so we can give each vendor the appropriate amount of attention and feedback and response and so on. And so I think the biggest thing is to make sure that we have processes in place and we're always honing those things in addition to packing, right? The actual getting product in and getting it, you know, in boxes for our subscribers. And I'm a stickler for how things look. I want the experience to be a wow experience every time a box is opened. And so that just means I make my mom crazy because I want to touch every box. <laughs> um, even if she's packed a box or something, I'm like, okay, no, wait, let me move that piece of paper. Let me move that thing over because I want it to be a certain way. And so all of that sourcing and the logistics behind that boxes, getting boxes in is another thing, right? Because when there's a, a supply chain issue, you know, boxes, you know, our suppliers sometimes get behind and so like, I need the box because we have things to put in the box. <laughs> and so there are a lot of moving parts to this. I think perhaps even more so than, you know, our, our e-commerce business 
previously, this has a lot of moving parts. And so it's just, um, you know, so it's, it's essentially my, I have to circle back around to like bundles, right? Because that's exactly what you have, right? You have a wholesale bundle, um, that you are uh, doing a subscription box for, well, I, and now are, is your box on Amazon or that's something you're still working to bring one? I know you said you were going to have maybe an exclusive one that you were releasing on Amazon, or are you just trying to keep it your website? Yeah, so we are working on an exclusive box for Amazon, yes, but we are not on the Amazon subscription um, model. So we, right now, the boxes are solely through available on our website. Um, and so, yes, you, you are absolutely correct. But the only difference with bundling is that, you know, we try to create bundles that are evergreen bundles that once they're successful, we are able to continue to curate. And yes, we always want to come out with additional bundles. With this, we're coming out with a new bundle every single every month. month. Every and month. And I applaud you for that because I, of course, as but as a bundler and knowing like the different things that are involved in that, it's um there's definitely a stress factor in there, especially with the timeline, right? Because it's like you you have promised these to people. And so you're very brave for, for um, taking that on um, because I, I totally get it. Like a lot of our listeners, they know they, they're in the trenches with us in one way or another, knowing that like, I can't send this box or this bundle in until I get this one thing that is MIA right now, you know? And so it kind of holds up the whole chain. Um, and so, yeah, the stress factor there can be can be quite high when it comes to like, is this product going to come in time? And if not, what are we going to do? Um, so I'm sure that presents some challenges. I, I would like to speak to that for a moment, though. And that does happen. Um, you know, I, I, luckily so far, it hasn't been a, a showstopper. But one of the things I would impart, you know, to, to you is that when you um, stay connected and you truly build a community with your subscribers, if there are supply chain issues and you stay in constant communication, this is what's happening. We're waiting on one last item, but it's an amazing item. We don't want your box to go out without it. You know, things like that, it helps to mitigate that friction that you may receive, as long as of course you don't make it a recurring thing, but they are very understanding. Yes, usually, you know, people are, you know, unless it's something they ordered as a specific gift for a specific thing. Um, folks, stay tuned, right? Because um, actually, I am, am receiving my very first Her Mind Box this coming week. It just wasn't here in time for the interview. So I'm going to do an extra video of unboxing um, because I just want you guys to see how amazing this is. Trudy and her team and her mom put their own personal love on each one of these boxes. Now, you guys also know, as the tough coach that I am, I am always encouraging people to, um, you know, hire people to help because I know that that can be kind of our own bottleneck, right? And I know that you guys experienced some, some big growth and, you know, you're continuing to grow your business and your subscribership. And hopefully when people hear this episode, they're going to run out and get their own Her Mind boxes because you guys, you deserve it. You really do. You deserve to give yourself a gift every month that, that, that can just be for you for no other reason than you need to take care of you. And so this is just one of those ways that you can commit to that. You can commit to your own self-care by sending yourself a package every single month to just be like, no, this is for me. And I'm happy to receive it. I mean, who doesn't like to get gifts in the mail, especially from yourself? I mean, why not? <laughs> or send it to someone you love. But the reality is like, let's just dive into that for just a minute, because I think it's really uh, helpful for everyone out there. Uh, I've been asking questions of like, at some point, we're going to have to, you're going to have to give up that, that personal packing of every box. And I, I, you know, just let's talk through that for a minute, even just ideas out loud. I know that that kind of makes you uncomfortable, does it not? To be like, what if someone else is putting their love into this box and it's not as much love as I'm putting in? Then what? You know, so let's talk about that for a minute. Like, how are you, how are you starting to transition into a growth phase where you might have to take yourself out of that packing equation. Yeah. So that's, that's absolutely, we're, we're right there at that point of determining, you know, how are we going to continue this? And because that special touch is not just product is important to me. Um, the model that we're, we're looking at is where we hire people, women, that would be my preference to hire more women because obviously that's central to our mission um 
is to 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 have that onboarding, that training, that um, that experience of what we want the boxes to contain and what our standards are going to be is going to be key to me being able to um, step away from that a bit. Um, you know, even to the point of making sure that right now, you know who packed your box, whether my mom packed it or I packed it, and we want that to continue. Whoever packs it, they're going to put their name on that so we know exactly who did because that is the level of responsibility we take in making sure that's the experience that people get. And so absolutely, we're looking at how we continue that as we scale. You know, I will tell you this, that is so, that's so much part of the experience that, that you're putting out there and what makes your business and your box different than others. Because I'll be honest, I kind of, I love gift boxes. I'm one of those people that like, I like to send people unique and different things. And I, you know, like even like Maureen, um, who is our amazing executive director here, like I've sent her boxes and different things and she just loves them because it's just like this big surprise in a box and you just feel so overwhelmed and cared for. And they're, they're um, even recently I ordered something from like e-commerce. It wasn't a gift box at all. It was actually a wholesale product. Um, and it came with a card that said your box was carefully prepared by su such and such. And I thought that is such a cool connection that like I'm thinking here, I'm just ordering some wholesale product at a rise. And then this card comes in and it's just like it's a connection to a real person, someone on the other end as a reminder that someone else took the time and care to pack this box up for you. And this wasn't even a gift. This was literally just product. And so uh, I think that's such a special touch because I know, I mean, let's, you know, you know, I, you're like, I'm, I'm a real, real person, right? So I like to get real about some of this stuff. Um, there's a lot of people with that negative self-talk and that, and that the yeah, buts and the what ifs out there. And um, did you experience any of that when you were starting your box? Because let's be real, the competition is fierce. There are, I mean, I did a brief search for subscription boxes. There are thousands to pick from. So, so um, what, what really, besides, I, mean, I know it was your, your, your aunt's legacy. Is there any other things there that really was just like, this box is going forward regardless of the competition? How did you get that bravery behind you to be able to keep moving, even though competition could be fierce? So I think, you know, for, for us, luckily, I guess, and, and not, um, the mission is so critical to what we're doing and how we're doing it. And even what we're doing as, um, you know, complements to the central box, um, the mission is, is critical. So, you know, supporting women, my aunt's legacy, obviously. And so we, I, I operate from a space of abundance, not lack, right? So there's enough for everyone out there. Um, there, is, there are people who our story resonates with them, our mission resonates with them. And so there, and, and we have um, subscribers that have been with us from the very beginning, and they are committed to, you know, what we're doing. And so, yes, are there a lot of subscription boxes in the space? Absolutely. But there's only one of us. And, you know, what, what we do and how we do it and the level of customer service that we provide and, you know, we know our subscribers by name, we respond, um, you know, to them in you know, all the different ways that they reach out to us. And so there is, you know, just there's only one of you, there's only one of me, and that's the way we look at it, right? We're not really, are we aware of other competitors in the space? Absolutely. But we are unique in what we're doing and how we're doing it and, and that I'm comfortable in that. I love that you shared that and thank you for being so open and honest and brave about that because, you know, you know me and we know each other to know that we are on the same page with that there is enough of the piece of the pie for everyone and let's, let's be, you know, being real about that you bring something unique and different to the table and so does everyone. So it that's that's the, the one thing that I want our listeners to really understand right now is whether you're creating your own subscription box from a legacy of a wonderful woman to carry through, or you're just making a wholesale bundle to be put out there there's enough room 
room for your box because your box, your bundle, your item that you're bringing is different than someone else's. You're bringing something new, interesting to the table and also your own personal expertise, your own um, flair to it. And because of that, that is why there's reason for everybody's box. There's, re there's room for everybody's business because no two people do the same things. And I just love the bravery there and the abundance mentality because uh, his recently I was faced with someone actually I'm so used to dealing with people that have the same mindset of like abundance and there's enough for everyone that the other day I reached out to a fellow Amazon um, instructor guru whatever you want to say to, to invite him to an interview and you know, I just thought he was doing some things that were different from here. And, and I was like, Hey, this would be a great, you know, collaboration. Let's talk to you about your process. And he was like, well, I don't think it would be a good fit because I kind of, you know, you're like a direct competitor. And I'm like, actually, no, like I, I do wholesale bundles, which is different than what you're doing. And I just wanted to bring the abundance to the table. He's like, no, I just don't think it would work out. I feel like we're kind of, you know, competitor. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> Okay, sad for you because, um, you know, I really feel like even if you're in the same space as someone, you've always got something to learn, you've always got something to share. And the more that we share our ideas with people, uh, the more everybody benefits. The rising tide raises all ships. So why not all of us raise everyone's ship up at the same time? Um, so I really love the fact that you guys operate from that, that faith and that abundance of, um, you know, we keep moving forward because there's enough for everyone. So um, when it comes to product selection, do you have any surveys? Are you looking at trends that are out there or are you just, um, you know, kind of picking the products that are best from, from different vendors? Like what is going into the selection? Do you guys have like a brainstorming session every month or like, how does that work out? Cause I, I'm just interested in some of the processes of, of that. Uh, do you use also, of course, do you use any of like the wholesale bundle concepts and research when you're doing some of this stuff? Yeah. So I think, you know, the, the, the bundling concept and, and your program, which I've been through, um, you know, in, is, is in the back of my mind in terms of, you know, even, you know, some of the vendor, um, working with vendors and different things that, that you have. Um, but we do conceptualize what is the theme. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I have a, right now, and, and one of the things I think that makes us a little bit different from some of the other subscription boxes is my, one of my personal missions is to build relationships. So you'll hear me refer to them as our vendor partners. So for, uh, for, for me, it's not just potentially one, you'll be in our box one time and thank you very much. It's we're building a partnership. And so I've had vendors in our box different, multiple times with different, they bring different products to market um, depending on what our theme is. We have custom products that they've designed just for us for that particular theme. And so that's a, an ongoing uh, partnership that, that we've established. Um, and so, you know, working through the, our themes, which we establish, you know, months in advance, and then what do we want? What is the angle for this particular theme? How can a product that, that someone, you know, presents to us that, you know, they'd like based on our theme, they think this is a great fit. Then I think about how can I, in, in, in our literature and how we talk about the product, how do I envision our customers using this product? How can that enhance their self-love and, and, and self-care. And so that's kind of my, my process. That is so just right on of how everyone should be thinking about that. It's, we talk about that in wholesale bundles. And I think so many people miss that first, right? Is like thinking about the customer that's going to use and consume this product, whether it is a self-care box or it is a coloring book set for kids, you still need to be thinking about the wants, needs, and desires of your customer. And that is why your guys' boxes are so special because not only do you have, you know, you just have like, like this trifecta of the, the legacy and the love from your aunt and then working with women business owners who are a lot of them maybe be handcrafting some of the stuff that's going into the boxes and they're working from their, their garages and their homes and their guest rooms and just like we all have been doing for many years and it's just creating this circle of um, growing communities not just for, for um, your box and your customers but for the women who are supporting and your vendor partners and I love of just your abundance mentality there and you're you're willing to you know continue moving forward with with women-owned businesses um, so when it comes to 
I like talking about logistics with some of the, the, the different things like that. Uh, let's talk about one of the real challenges with any business is really, um, you know, cost and the fact that like um, we want to have the best possible product, but we're also in business. And so we also need to pay ourselves for all the hard work we're doing. And uh, how do you find balance within the the quality that you're providing, because I know you're you're providing high quality, hands-on type products. You know, this isn't like cheap Alibaba stuff. This is a lady that is curating, you know, a, a woman who's curating some of the stuff from their own homes. We know that that to cost a little bit more. And so how are you mitigating some of the cost, uh, the, the cost concerns when it comes to that and still being able to make the profit that you deserve? So that is a challenge. And perhaps that's one of the challenges I sort of listed when we <laughs> talked about challenges before. And so, you know, yes, I, I definitely, whenever I meet with a, a new vendor um, or a new potential vendor, I tell them that, you know, I want to make sure that they feel whole when you when, when we agree on whatever the, the arrangement is. Um, because I never want to feel like some, I, don't, I never want a vendor partner to feel like they've been taken advantage of. That's, that, that does not work for me. But in the same, the same vein, as you said, we are in business and for us to be sustainable, it has to be profitable. And so we do a lot when it comes to marketing and promoting and supporting our vendor partners. You know, they're in our, in our social media efforts, they're in our email campaigns, um, I do videos, I do different things that features them, we, we tag them, our influencers talk about them, our influencers tag them. And so they're getting a lot of visibility. Plus being in the box, we're delivering their product directly to someone's home who's interested in their type of product. And so there is value in that. And sometimes being able to articulate that value, some vendor partners see it right away and they give us pricing accordingly. Um, and some smaller smaller ones that may be newer to the value of that marketing blitz, if you will, um, is, is kind of lost on them. And so they struggle with that, um, uh, basically um, from determining value, where does that value live for them and how does that translate into pricing for us? And so it is, it is quite challenging. Um, and you know, as, like you said, we want the product to be of high quality. And so, and especially being handcrafted, a lot of times, you know, there's that that um, that difference. So yeah, it, it is a challenge, and sometimes we have to walk away. And I will tell someone, you know, I unfortunately, based on that price point, we we can't do that. Sometimes I'll ask, can you make it in a smaller size so that they still get to experience it, or our subscribers get to experience it, but we can meet somewhere in terms of pricing. And so, you know, I try to be very flexible, but it is indeed a challenge, especially for a, a newer box to the, to the, to the space where our numbers aren't, you know, you know, where, where we can do that kind of volume, you know, mm -hmm. price thing. So it's, it's, it's a challenge. Well, thank you for being open about that because, you know, we, we're all in business and that's always, you know, our bottom line is still the bottom line. We can have as much passion in the world to have a passion project, but um, we're either running a passion project or a business. And so we have to, you know, when we're marrying both, um, there's always that factor that, um, you know, we have to think about the, the cost and cost effectiveness. And, you know, I just have no doubt that as you guys grow, you know, you'll, you'll grow into um, profiting more because you'll be able to do a lot more of volume, you know, when it comes to that, but, you know, those are, those are great things to, to think about, you know, especially for people that are listening to, if you've got a, a bundle that you're putting together and one of the components is really expensive, or it's something that, you know, you, you can shop around, or maybe, you know, there's, there's no harm, like you just said, and, and reaching out to a, a vendor and saying, does this come in a smaller size? Could you manufacture it in a smaller size to kind of, you know, have an idea of the product? And then if somebody wants a full size, then they could, they were exposed to the brand and they can go back to their website at any time and, and you know purchase a full size version. So I think you're so right there though with the with the value that your vendors are getting. Um, so for anyone's listening, um, I know that you have a uh, brand partnership that you work with with people so if you if anyone that's listening curates your own product and you think it would be a good fit for Trudy's box, um, 
I know they have a form you can fill out on their website to to become a partner with them and fill out the application. And they're always looking for uh, new opportunities for that. So make sure that you guys um, reach out there if you feel like your product would be a good fit for their mission, um, for um, what the box is doing out into the world. And, you know, the, the value there is um, I'm with you on that, you know, as far as the marketing value and things like that. You are literally hand delivering somebody's brand inside of your box to, you know, hundreds of people people across the world, um, that is huge marketing for the company that's making the products as well. So um, that exposure alone, I think most people need to understand that that, that is, uh, exposure is, is more value sometimes than actually selling a product. Um, because as you spread the word about something so amazing and people start talking about it, uh, that's when really the magic happens. Yeah, absolutely. So where can everyone go to find you and your story? I know you've been doing a lot of interviews with the different people that are coming to bring products to your boxes and all of that. Um, where can they go to experience everything we've been talking about today? So our website would be the one of the places. Um, so our website is her-mind.com. Um, we also are on social media as My Her Mind Box, all one word, on all social media. Um, in addition, um, we're on YouTube as well. I actually have a In Her Word series that I started and have interviewed three different um, dynamic warrior women. Um, so that is, again, spreading the word about our empowerment and being fearless. And so that's another place where we, we are. So those are the ways to Awesome, find you guys, everything, all the links will be in uh, the show notes below the video and in the regular show notes again. Um, if you want to reach out to Trudy and if you have products, they have everything on their website, her-mind.com and you can go there as well. And again, stay tuned because I'm going to be doing an, a, a live unboxing when my box arrives so that I can show you the amazing uh, love that's put into this box because yeah, you can order subscription boxes here and there and themes and different stuff, but you can't get one like this. You can't get one that's leaving a legacy and supporting uh, female women-owned entrepreneurs across the globe that are distributing their products. They're working hard behind the scenes. This is not, you know, you're just your regular run-of-the-mill wholesale stuff. This is um, like hand loved. I don't even know how to, to explain that any other way. It's like, you just can't get that anywhere else. And so it's solely worth the efforts and the value you're going to get just by reading the story cards that come in there from uh, the different people in the box. So thank you so much for your time and your um, energy here and for, for creating this legacy for, for your aunt and for, you know, many generations to come to carrying the love um, through uh, her and through other people. Um, she would be so happy and so proud that you're continuing to sprinkle the love all around the world with her um, fierceness and her fearlessness as well. So thank you for sharing her with us and for, with your story. Again, you guys, her-mind.com, order your subscription box. I can't even, I didn't even get mine and I can't even imagine what the December one's going to be. I'm like, ah, I'm so excited. So um, get your guys' box. They do have deluxe and regular versions. You can gift them. You can have a subscription or just one box. There's just all different ways. And I'm really just so excited about this box and I know you guys want to go find one. So you can go to mommyincome.com slash her mind and you can get your box today. Learn all about the different things that they have going on and subscribe to their, their newsletter. Look at the different boxes. Maybe you can give one to someone that you um, think deserves this box. Give one to yourself. These are just so amazing. Again, mommyincome.com slash her mind. You can get your her mind box subscription today buy one, buy a whole year, get one for a friend. You won't regret it. These boxes are so amazing. To my Amazon friends, to my friends out there that think that maybe they have an idea, you guys have an idea of something other than just your regular Amazon stuff. Explore your ideas. Explore your ideas. Give it a shot. You know, it, just because you you are doing one thing doesn't mean that you can't use the knowledge and skills like Trudy and her mom have done to then bring those knowledge and skills to a whole different niche, a whole different business that that you're more passionate about. And I, that's just what I love 
love about this whole thing is that you're just building upon all of your skills to bring more to the universe. And uh, thank you for that. And thank you for your time and energy. You guys, mommyincome.com slash workshop. Don't forget about the workshop in January, her-mind.com. Get your subscription box. I know you could be anywhere else listening to any other thing right now. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening and for your time. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.